three, two, one. Hi everybody, Mr. Against here, and I'm coming to you with my first student request video, how to make a book cover in Photopea. It's pretty easy. It's gonna be just a little bit more complicated than Project 2 making a YouTube banner. We're gonna basically be doing the same thing where you just find the elements of the image you wanna build. You're gonna bring them in bit by bit. For an example, I built a new version of the cover of the book I was reading, On the Other Side of Freedom by Doray McKesson. So this is the real book cover. And here is my Photoshop version of it that I built. Now notice it is a little bit different. If you wanna spend a tremendous amount of time getting the font and the size perfect for your version of a book cover, you can. You also don't need to copy someone else's book cover, but I really like the idea of remixing to start. If you wanna just go from scratch and make your own thing, totally cool. I love remixing. I, I like to kind of see what other people have done. You could always go over to Google Images and search up awesome book covers, find one or two you think are really cool and you'd like to do and analyze them. What are the elements in here, right? So we've got our background color. We've got one or two images on top. We've got two different sized font and we're just gonna put all those together and layers in photo P. There are a couple different versions of this, depending on what kind of book cover you wanna make. Maybe you just wanna print out a cover that goes on top of a stack of paper. And in that case, this would be a great book cover. Other times you might wanna actually try to print it out. And if you wanted to do that, you'd really wanna get uh, have an area, a margin for the spine of the book, and you'd want the back cover uh, where maybe you have a blurb about your book too. So I do have a couple versions of that. I haven't built that one. I just did the front cover for this project, and I'm going to take you through how to set those up. I'm also going to link a PSD for this basic book cover below. So if, if you want to do the spine in the back too, you can totally do that. If you wanted to do the seams, what I'm going to do for my image size here, I'm going to click on my image size. If I was doing a new image, I would make new image with 12 height, 8.5, 300 DPI. First thing in Photopea, what you want to do is you want to go to view and you want to make sure that your rulers are on. And if you go to show guides and paths, by default, your rulers might be set to pixel. Try to make sure those are set to inches. If you want to add a guideline, you just left click, make sure that you have the move tool selected, you left click and you can bring out a guideline. Uh, so if I wanted to go to about six and a half, you kind of eyeball it and you get it as close as possible. If you can't get it 100%, what you can do is zoom in and then you'll be able to adjust it perfectly pretty easily. And the same way that you have all these elements that you constructed top to bottom, if you just wanted to take one of them and to put it on the, the um, side, edit, free transform. You can kind of put that on the side there and you can kind of build that up with a title or whatever you'd want to do. One thing that can be really useful, especially when you're working on a larger project like a book cover, is to use a folder. If I click to create that folder and I call that say red letters, and I could take all of these red letters on the back here and I can move those and put them in the red letter folder. So if I wanted to turn those on and off to help me control the layers and building things together, sometimes if you're using folders, uh, that can really help you focus on what you wanna be working on at that time. So use folders if you find it useful for building your book cover. But yeah, let's go through how to make a book cover. Well, first thing that I did was I searched out the cover of the book that I was using. So this is the, the actual book cover and then I go through and I kind of make my text and my elements. So what I'm gonna do in this example is I am going to create a new layer and I am going to sample the color I want from the original book cover. So I'm gonna click on my color here, click once to select the color. And then on my layer above, I can call that background. And I am going to use my paint bucket tool. It might be on gradient, but I'll go from paint bucket and I'll click once and that'll add that back cover. I'll put the real one on top so I can toggle it on and off. So when we look at this book cover or when you look at any book cover, you're going to wanna decide what elements you're gonna have in it. This book cover is a little complicated. I like it a lot. So there's basically one graphic element and three different text or font elements. The graphics element we have are these kind of like little black cutouts. If I zoom in on the real version of the image, they do have a little bit of texture. So it's kind of going from like light gray to darker gray. There's a drop shadow on it. So what I'm gonna try to do is simulate that. I'm gonna create a layer on top. And what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my lasso tool. I'm gonna kick polygonical lasso tool. 
and I am going to start to kind of click and trace around. I could also try to draw it, um, but these are pretty straight lines, so I think that I get pretty close if I kind of click around. You could also use the magnetic lasso tool, but I think the straight lines just makes it a little bit easier for me. Notice it's not, I'm not 100% perfect with it. There are some curves in the original image, but that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get the element close. Cool, so now I've created this selection and I am gonna take my paint bucket and I'm just gonna click once on there. Doesn't matter what color it is because I'm going to use my blending options to add a little bit of texture. Click on blending options and I am going to click pattern overlay. Now this initial pattern is pretty ugly, but in some of the patterns there is a kind of dark texture pattern. It's not exactly the same texture that the original book cover was, but it's pretty close. And uh, you can kind of zoom in and out if you want to zoom, have more texture, less texture. I'll kind of zoom in. That will look like a pretty basic element. I think that looks good. If I wanted to go search for textures on Google Images and download some images, I could use that instead of this pre-built texture. But I was just using blending options because it's there and it's pretty easy. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I want to try to simulate this drop shadow. So notice that the drop shadow is directly underneath it. So I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna go blending options and I'm going to click drop shadow. I am going to turn my angle so the light is coming from directly above. I can mess around kind of with my distance to pull that in or out. And I'll click OK. So that's the original and that's on top. If you want to kind of completely change it up, you can. Like I said, I'm just doing this as a, a kind of example of how one would build it. Okay, now that we have that background element finished, what we need to do now is we're going to create the text. So to start, we'll do the white text and then we'll do the red afterwards. I'll put that on just to leave up as a reference. I'm gonna take my type tool. And I'm gonna drag that over top of my black element and I'm gonna type on the. I've already found a font that I like that I think looks close. Doesn't look exact. If you lose your font, you can always click on, on the font tool here, one, two, and then I'll select everything. Now notice that the font is centered, so I'm going to click over to center, and I can click to kind of move that around. I want to get it roughly the same size as the font here, so notice that each is so much bigger, so I'm going to click that. I'm going to take my size that I have at 140, maybe I'll take it down to, let's change it up to 120. Probably looks pretty good. When I have the font selected, I can also change the color. If I click here and I click on that color, I'll change it to a little bit of a whiter color. And now what I wanna do is notice that these letters are pretty spaced out. <laughs> I've already changed the settings, but I wanted to show you how to change the settings. So when I double click on my font, I'm gonna go over here to click on the character tab, and that's going to show me the elements of my fonts. So right here we have tracking leading. That's going to let us move all the letters around. With my tracking here, it started at 100%. If I move it down to the bottom with the original, I double click on it and then I move my tracking. You can start to see, start to get an idea of the distance between the letters. These are pretty wide font that I'm trying to mimic. The font that you make for your book cover might be pretty small. So don't worry too much about that. If you wanna manipulate the way the letters look, you're gonna click over here to your character tab and that's the important part. If you have multiple pieces on top of each other, you'll click it down here to the paragraph tab and you'll be able to kind of control the distance between sentences if you're trying to write like a blurb on the back of the book. All right, so that on the is looking pretty good. It's looking somewhat similar to the original one. And what I'm going to do now is show you how I created the red font in the back. I have my original white font layer. I am going to duplicate that layer. And on the copy layer, I'm gonna click into it and I'm gonna change that color. I'm gonna click the background on and then I'm gonna click the duplicated color and I'm going to click the red. I'm going to sample the color from the original, turn that off again. And now what I'm gonna do is make that larger. Because Photo P caps your font size at 150, what I'm gonna have to do is right click, rasterize, and I'm gonna do edit, free transform. I'm gonna hold down shift, and now I'm going to make this a bit bigger. 
So that looks pretty good as far as size. When I've got the size about what I want, I'm going to go to edit, free transform, and I'm going to right click and flip horizontally. And then I'm going to move that red text under my black layer. That is basically how you build the elements, right? So you find the elements of your book cover, you turn it on. That's not exactly right, but it's getting pretty close. Again, so here is the real version and here's my fake version I just made in Photoshop. And the same way that yeah, you build that element, you would just do the exact same thing for these other text elements. So you'll find your colors, you'll find your text, you'll find any other graphical elements that you want. Maybe you want the background not to be a solid color, but a gradient, or you want it to be a photograph of something that you've taken. You could just bring those in and use those as layers. It's really just about building up your layers. It's your book cover. If you want to have something wrapping from the front to the back, PNGs everywhere jumping out, you're, it's totally cool. So this is just going over the basic elements of building a book cover, and I hope that you find it useful. Hit me up if you've got any questions, and if you there's any other videos you want me to make in PhotoP or Scratch, let me know, and maybe that'll be the next video I make. Have a great one. I'm excited to see what you make. Peace.